welcome back to our TLE Agricultural Crop Production. It's me again, Teacher Johnny, to be with you in our new lesson. For today's episode, we will learn about applying recommended time and rate of fertilizer. And after the lesson, you should be able to first identify the plant food elements and their functions. Two, describe plant food and fertilizer. Number three, differentiate organic fertilizer from an organic fertilizer. Number four, identify the sources of organic fertilizer and the types of inorganic fertilizer based on the fertilizer element present. Let's start. Plant food. Soil is only one of the main factors that contribute to high productivity. Fortunately, it can be controlled by man. Maximum benefit from soil fertility program can be realized only if the other factors of plant growth are favorably controlled. Fertilizer is any organic or inorganic material of natural or synthetic origin which is added to the soil to supply certain elements essential to plant growth. Fertilizers are used to increase growth rate, increase yield, and increase the quality or nutritive value of plants. Plants have three sources from which they get their necessary nutrients. First, we have the air. The air contains carbon dioxide, which is a combination of carbon with oxygen. Carbon dioxide provides a source of carbon and oxygen for growing plants. In turn, when plants residues decay, Carbon dioxide is again released into the air. The air around us is composed in large, or largely of nitrogen, very inert gas. Although nitrogen is needed in large amounts, in plants, nitrogen from the air cannot be used by the growing plant. Two legumes, the bacteria in their nodules, develop in their roots as a result of inoculation and fix and utilize nitrogen from the atmosphere. Number two, we have water. Water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Thus, it provides plants with these elements. Number three, we have the soil. All other plant food elements in the soil are therefore very important. Now, let's proceed with the plant food elements. First, the primary plant food elements. First, we have the nitrogen. The chemical symbol is capital letter N. Next, phosphorus. The symbol of P. And potassium, the symbol of K. So these are the three primary primary plant food elements, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Next, these are the secondary plant food elements, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. And these are the elements from the air and water. We have the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Trace elements are the manganese, boron, copper, zinc, iron, molybdenum, chlorine, okay let's proceed to the plant food elements and their functions. First we have the nitrogen. Functions of nitrogen are first give dark green color to plants. Okay, so it's 
the nitrogen that is responsible for the dark green color to plants. Promotes leaf, stem, fruit, and seed growth. Another function of nitrogen is to improve the quality of leaf crops since it gives the dark green color of the leaves. Next, facilitates rapid growth. Another, it increases protein content of food and leaf crops. Number six, feeds soil microorganisms during their decompositions of low nitrogen organic materials. Now, these are now the symptoms of deficiency for nitrogen. First, sticky yellowish green color, distinctly slow and dwarf growth, drying up, firing of leaves from bottom of the plants, proceeding upward. Another plant food element, we have the phosphorus. And these are the functions of phosphorus. First, it stimulates early root formation and growth. It gives rapid and vigorous start of plants. Number two, it has sense maturity. Number four, it stimulates blooming. Number five, it aids in seed formation. Number six, it gives plants hardiness. Symptoms of deficiency of phosphorus. Number one, arpies, leaves, stems, and branches. It also result in slow growth and maturity. You can also serve a small slender stalk in case of corn. Lack of stooling in small grains. No yields of grains, fruit, and seed. Number three, plant food element. We have the potassium. Functions of potassium in plants. It imparts fiber and disease resistance to plants. Number two, reduces strong, sticky stalks, thus reduces lodging. Another, increases plumpness of the grains and seeds. Helps in the formation transfer of starch, sugar, and oil. And lastly, imparts hardiness to legumes. Symptoms of deficiency. First, hotly, spotting, streaking, or curling of leaves starting from the lower level. Another is starch or worn margin of the leaves. Dropping the corn plant falls down prior to maturity due to poor root development. Kinds of fertilizers. Number one, organic fertilizers. Organic fertilizers are farm manures, compost, plant residues, and other farm waste which supply nutrients and improve soil physical conditions. Organic fertilizers are added to the soil in large amounts to meet nutrient demands of crops. The use of organic fertilizers is a vital component of integrated nutrient cycling system. Next, inorganic fertilizers. Inorganic fertilizers usually result from chemical processes such as sulfuric acid treatment or rock phosphate to produce super phosphate. It consists of materials processed or transformed into chemical material or fertilizer. Inorganic fertilizers are artificially prepared from those that may be obtained from the market. Commercial fertilizers could be first, single element fertilizer, which contains 
only one of the major fertilizer elements. Example, ammonium sulfate, urea, and the super phosphate. Number two, we have the incomplete fertilizer. The complete fertilizer contains only two major elements like amopos, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Number three, we have the complete fertilizers. Contain the three primary plant food elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Nutrient contents of fertilizers. Fertilizers being sold in the market must carry a guarantee of the kind and amount of nutrients they contain. Information is printed on the fertilizer bags or packages. The guaranteed analysis of the fertilizer material expressed in percent following the order Total nitrogen Citrate soluble phosphoric acid and the water soluble potash is called fertilizer cream. Customarily, the potassium or the phosphorus and the potassium content are expressed as oxides as oxides of the elements. Thus, the fertilizer bulb with 14 14 14 analysis contains. 14% total of the nitrogen, 14% citrate soluble, and 14% water soluble of potassium. The relative proportion of the fertilizer nutrient present in the fertilizer is expressed in terms of fertilizer ratio, such as 2100 for ammonium sulfate, 4500 for urea. 14, 14, 14 for complete fertilizer. We have here the analysis of common inorganic or commercial fertilizers. For anhydrous ammonia, we have 82% of nitrogen, 0% phosphorus, 0% of potassium. For ammonium sulfate, we have 21% of nitrogen, 0% of phosphorus and potassium. For ammonium phosphate, we have 16% of nitrogen, 20% of phosphorus, and 0% of potassium. For ammonium chloride, we have 25% of nitrogen, 0% of phosphorus and 0% for potassium. For ammonium chloride, we have 25% nitrogen, 0% potassium and phosphorus. For urea, we have 45% nitrogen and 0% phosphorus and potassium. For super phosphate, we have 0% nitrogen and 20% Phosphorus and 0% potassium. For trial superphosphate, we have 0% nitrogen and 48% phosphorus and 0% potassium. For muriate of potash, we have 0% for nitrogen and phosphorus, 60% for potassium. For sulfate of potash, we have 0% nitrogen and phosphorus, 50% potassium. For the complete fertilizer, we have 14% nitrogen, 14% phosphorus, and 14% potassium. Now, those are the analysis of common inorganic or commercial, commercial fertilizers. 